hello everyone this is you Mia gaming logging in and the game is eve echoes so it is the sixth day of your life in new eden and you are facing a really important question which trainer cruiser to pick along with that you'll be facing a numerous other questions so like what are the, what is the difference between a frigate destroyer and a cruiser what are the fittings you need to have on a cruiser what skills you will be needing for having a piloting a better cruiser and the most important question of all which cruiser should i pick from the four i have in front of me it's like a life and death situation so do not worry in this video i'll be covering all the questions you might you must be asking yourself when you reach day six and if you have an omega of course so let's head over to the market and discuss what is the difference between a frigate destroyer and a cruiser main differences so as you might have guessed that a frigate is a really small ship destroyer is a larger ship than a frigate and cruisers are bigger than destroyers we can get a basic idea if we look at the overall defenses each of the ships have ship types have so if we go to a frigate and look at the overall defense it is around 1700 so if you pick, if you pick any frigate from all the frigates in front of you you will see that the overall defense for any frigate is between the 1500 2000 range now if you go for a destroyer you will see that the overall defense is around the 3000 to 4000 range for any of the destroyer you pick and when you go to the cruisers you will see that there is a huge difference uh, not this one uh, say the caracal navy issue you'll see that there's 11500 overall all defense in this one particular ship and this means that you stay in the fight longer you do more dps and you are a great asset on the battlefield because you can tank up to five times better than a frigate and almost two to three times better than a destroyer so with great power comes great responsibilities and you need to understand how you need to fly your cruiser so one of the main difference between a destroyer frigate destroyer and a cruiser is that in cruisers you equip medium weapons whereas in frigates and destroyers you equip small weapons so if you go to the high slots main weapon and go to example lasers you'll see that there are small pulse lasers medium pulse lasers and large pulse lasers and then small beam lasers. so there are the two varieties of lasers you can have and if you go to the small pulse laser and say pick a mk5 small pulse laser you'll see that the dps comes to 17.6 and if you scroll down you will see that a small pulse laser designed for short to medium range engagements and usually fitted fit it to frigates and destroyers when you go into the medium pulse lasers and go for um, mk5 medium pulse laser you'll see that it is a whooping 50 percent increase almost in the dps and it, if you scroll down you'll also see that is it, it is usually fitted to cruisers and battle cruisers with an increase in the dps there also comes an increase in the power grid, power grid requirement in the activation cost even in the apt optimal range which is a good sign so if we go to the small pulse lasers and say look at the small pulse laser 5 you'll see that there's a difference between the power grid requirement and there's an activation cost different and there's an optimal range difference as well so in the medium one we had an optimal range of i say i think a 10 to 12 and we had an accuracy fall of a 5 then we had a higher activation cost and power grid requirement you do not need to worry about power power grid requirement and activation cost because the cruisers have an have better energy capacitors and power grid in on their ships so this was the rosy picture of how cruisers are really effective and huge assets on the battlefield now you should listen very carefully to the cons as well so frig uh, so cruisers will take more time to lock on to targets and they will be less like likely to hit a target if the target is really close to them so if we look at a small pulse laser you'll see that the tracking speed is 384 and if we go to a medium pulse laser you will see that the tracking speed is only 45 40.56 which is really low like you just <laughs> jumped from a cliff it just looks like you jumped from a cliff it is a really s s low tracking speed 
so that means if a target is really fast and really close to you you will not be able to hit them at all so that it would it would mean that you need to get out of out of there really quick and so you must be asking then if we pit a frigate and a cruiser against each other who will win that is a tricky question to answer <laughs> guys because it completely depends on the pilot skills so if you have a cruiser of course you get weapons to say lower down the speed of the frigates that is stasis webifier and the frigates also get a good boost with the nosferatu and stuff so it will depend on what weapons you have and what are your skills in piloting that particular ship also the cruisers are really slow ships so if you were seeing getting away from situations really quickly when you were in a frigate you will not be able to get quickly away from situations if you are in a cruiser because it will take a longer time for them to twist and turn and align to the direction they want to head in and at the same time they will have a much slower warp speed so let us give you an example if you go to the executioner and look at the flight velocity it is 417 meter per second and there is a warp speed of 5.5 au per second and however if you go to a cruiser and look at it you will see that uh, there is a flight velocity of 219 meter per second and a warp speed of 3 au per second so that means a direct 50% hit in the speed of the cruisers so do weigh your pros and cons before you go jump into a cruiser ship and act and handle that expertly and provide you with a seamless guide on tricks and tips and tutorials now let us go head over to the skills and look at what are the skills you need to train for a cruiser so as we discussed frigates destroyers and cruisers are completely different ships so if we go head over to the say electronics and if you for example have leveled frigate engineering to say 5 do keep in mind that the frigate engineering bonuses will not be carried over to the cruiser engineering engineering bonuses so that is why you need to keep it in mind and train cruiser engineering and then you should go over to the cruising technology and as well as and train the cruiser commands now let's head over to the skill section and discuss what are the skills you will be needing to pilot a cruiser effectively as we discussed frigates destroyers and cruisers are completely class apart so you of course need different skills for them as well uh, so you should some of the skills you should be training as soon as you get into a cruiser are the cruiser engineering this will help you give a, you a better capacitor better power grid and better warp, warp capacitor need so the capacitor will have make you have more juices so that you can fire more weapons up the power grid will help you equip more weapons on your ships and the warp capacitor need will help you consume less capacitor when you are warping next defense upgrade in the defense upgrade you need to upgrade the cruiser defense upgrade skill and as this will help you in increasing your shield and armor of that cruiser thus making you a lot tankier as i mentioned below there is a difference in the weapons you use in the cruisers as well so if you head over to the weapon technology you will be noticing that there are small laser operations and then there are medium laser operations so if you are in a cruiser you need to train the medium laser operation of course this depend the weapons depend upon the cruiser you are flying and is not limited to lasers but the main point is that you need to train medium weapons and do not equip your cruisers with small weapons because it is useless you'll just be wasting your potential now let us go over what are the fittings you can equip on your cruisers let us head over to the market to look at what all fittings does new eden have in store for us so let us first discuss the high slots the high slots weapon will of course differ, depend upon the cruiser you are flying so if you are flying a mark cruiser you will be going for lasers if you are flying, flying a 
Gallantic cruiser, you'll be going for rail guns. If you're flying, flying a Minotaur cruiser, you'll be going for cannons. And if you're flying a Kaldari cruiser, you'll be going for missile launchers. Now, let us head over to the mid slots. That is the sub weapons. The first is drones. There is a drone slot in all the cruisers, so it is highly recommendable that you have any sort of drone in equipped in this cruiser because hey, how does uh, extra DPS hurt you? So you'll just uh, you'll be getting a 20 to 30 extra DPS and that is all good. The second is the electronic warfare and in this comes the status webifiers. This is a must have for a cruiser because your cruiser as we discussed the weapon the medium weapons have difficulty in firing at at opponents that are faster than you. So the status webifier slows down the opponents by 51% so that you, your Weapon systems can track them down and uh, hit them. Next are the warp jammers, and they are a must on cruisers. However, do not worry if you do not have them because it's they are really difficult to find. Energy Nosferatu's, and I would say this is a must have on cruisers, just like the stasis webifiers. It is because cruisers require a humongous amount of a capacitor to run because they are firing like four high slot weapons that that moreover there are all medium weapons then they have like four low slots so they will be requiring a lot of energy to run efficiently so the uh, so the Nosferatu's help you gain energy from your opponents and transfer the energy to your capacitor so of course you need to go for the medium energy Nosferatu's then the energy neutralizers are basically to just extinguish the capacitor of your in of our opponent. You can or not equip. You can or cannot equip, and it's your choice. We will not be discussing the rest of the stuff right now because those are not important at this stage. Then, uh, of course, if you are a Amar or if you're a Galante, you'll need to go for armor repairers and armor plates. And armor hardeners if you are a kaldari and a minmata you need to go for shield boosters extenders and hardeners let us have a quick go through of what are the functions of each of these repairers plates and hardeners so looking at the medium armor repairs we have now if we long press on them we'll see that they give an armor repair of 348 for each cycle of nine seconds next the armor repairs so if you look at the statistics, you'll see that it gives a temporary boost in the armor of to the range of 1100 and it has an activation time of 25 seconds and a reactivation delay of 60 seconds. So it means that you will get a boost of 1100 armor for 25 seconds and if you do not utilize the complete boost, the armor will return back to normal and then you'll require 60 seconds to reactivate the armor plate again and the adaptive armor hardener increases the resistance against all the damage types it will be the same for the shield boosters extenders and hardeners you can long press and learn about what they do then the capacitor battery will increase your capacitor juices by for a certain amount of time period it just works like this armor plates or it is just for the capacitor it is also recommended that you activate the capacitor first and after that you activate the armor so that you can leverage the huge amount of capacitor boost you'll be getting and at the same time have a good armor boost afterburners is uh, not an I'll not say a necessary but you can definitely think about equipping an afterburner on your cruiser because they help you to cover up the huge lack of speed you have compared to frigates and destroyers rest of them are your <laughs> your call on whether you want to go for them or not so this was the basic general idea of how to equip your cruisers if you have any questions or any doubts about fittings do hit the comments down below and i'll be happy to answer your questions the fittings discussed by me are just my personal opinion and you're free to use whatever combination of fittings you want on your cruisers because EVE Echoes is all about creativity.
be creative with your fittings and shock your opponents now going over to the main part on what are the differences between all the four cruisers we got an option to pick from so let's head over to the inventory and look at the ship safe we just got from our daily rewards and we have this ship safe right in front of us so there are four trainer cruisers you can choose from as shown below it is the omen trainer the caracal trainer the vixia trainer and the stabber trainer so what influences your choice of cruiser there are two things which will influence your choice of cruisers the first one is the weapon systems you are specializing into whether it is lasers rail guns cannons or missiles the, th the second is where is your corporation based so if your co corporation is based mainly in kaldari space you will be wanted to go for a caracal trainer and not an omen trainer because if you go for an omen trainer you will have to form farm laser modules and armor tanking stuff which you will find in the amar sprays and as the eve echoes community grows older it is getting more risky to travel long distances away from your headquarters even the market in your the, in the surrounding region will not be favorable for you and you'll have to go a long way to fetch all the modules and the weapons you will be needing we have been always discussing on how you need lasers for amar you need railguns for this and that so how do you identify which ship is of which faction so there is a really simple way of identifying that so if you go to the omen trainer you will see that the trainer has a background of gold so if there is gold color it means it is a mar ship if there is blue color it means a kaldari ship if it is a green color it means a galante ship and if it is a orange color it will it means a minmatar ship you can also understand what the weapon systems are required by the ship by looking at the bonuses you will be getting if you level into any specific ship so if uh, if you look at an omen trainer you will see that you get a uh, minus 10 percent medium laser capacitor need reduction every time you upgrade the medium medium laser operation bonus so it gives you an idea that you'll be requiring lasers for it and you should fit lasers on its high slots if you are going for a caracal trainer you need to equip missiles so that you get better bonuses if you are going for a vexer trainer you will see that you do not have any railgun bonuses but you do have four drone slots i will recommend that you train the railguns if you are going for a vexer trainer and you equip railguns on the high slots if you are going for a stabber trainer you need to of course go for go for medium the medium cannons to utilize the complete potential of this ship now what is the difference between a regular omen and a omen trainer so there are two main differences between a omen trainer and a regular omen and that is the omen trainer is just 70 percent of the actual omen so if you compare the statistics in front of you you will see that there is a 30 percent difference between both of them now if we go a bit down and just long press omen you'll see that it has a overall defense of 9725 and got a say capacitor of 20 2526 and now if you go for an omen trainer you'll see that it got a overall defense of 7780 and got a capacitor of 2389 so there is a seven so it there's a like a 30 percent difference between both of them and the other main difference is that it has one extra low slot so that can mean that you will ha can have an extra armor repairer or extra armor hardener and that will increase your chances of survivability by a lot so if you pit a uh, omen against an omen trainer an omen will wins hands down <laughs> of course and then unless uh, the omen player is a complete noob but assuming that both are equally experienced and omen will win any day hope you guys enjoyed the video and understood on what decision you should make when you're choosing the trainer of at the end of six days
If you like the video, do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to be hearing more about EVE course content in the future. Thank you so much ever for watching and see you soon.